Welcome back, everyone. I'm the Bad Luck Gamer, and if you haven't or can't tell, I have a green screen and it's working now. Yay! I've had it for a bit, but I needed lights and I got this weird shadow on my face. I'll get that tended to, but just a quick update for those who are keeping up with the videos. Anyway, today we're finishing off the Hell Knights, and I'm very excited for this one because this is technically my favorite even though i don't think the archetype itself is that good i just enjoy the hell knight signifier a lot now the hell knight signifier are the spell casters of the hell knights and something that's important to notice is that in the hell knights signifiers rank below normal hell knights in most orders besides order of the gate order of the gate is reversed and signifiers rank higher than standard Hell Knights in its order, which doesn't have that many actual standard Hell Knights in it. So if you are playing a Hell Knight signifier, you do have to recognize that your place in the pecking order is a little bit lower, unless, of course, you are in the order of the gate. So just kind of wanted to mention that. And I also want to mention as well, people have been mentioning that in my prior videos, I don't mention some of the lesser known orders of the Hell Knights. They're not relevant to the archetype. They don't add anything to the archetype itself. If you want a lore video, go watch a lore video. These videos are not meant for Hell Knight lore. This is just the archetypes and how they work for the characters. So that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the dedication itself. So the Hell Knight signifier is similar to the Hell Knight as you can only pick it up at level six and you cannot be both a Hell Knight and Hell Knight signifier. You have to pick one or the other, but of course you can share your feats with the Hell Knight Armager because the Armager is the prerequisite for it in a lot of ways. And you don't need to get three feats in Hell Knight Armager to get into Signifier. You can just do it right out the gate as soon as you meet the level requirement, which is level six. So once you get the actual dedication, actually first, uh, some interesting things about the requirement. So prerequisite wise, like most other organization based archetypes, you do need to be a Hell Knight. You also need to have the Hell Knight Armager dedication. You need to have a lawful alignment, which is kind of going away, but it's going to be replaced with you need to follow the edicts of the Hell Knights. So it's pretty easy to maintain and uh, you have to pass the Hell Knight test. But the biggest one I want you all to notice here is you need to have a spell cla casting class feature. Class feature is important because it means that if you don't have a class that innately gives you spell casting, you actually cannot be a signifier. Now, balance wise, there's no reason for this. Uh, if if you as a GM wanted to allow a player who gained spell casting through like a multi class archetype or something, that's fine. But I will say that the still rules is written does not actually qualify as a class feature. It's not. It's a dedication feature. So that's important to mention. Regardless, balance wise, it doesn't change anything. I think it's just a lore reason why for the Hell Knights. And I, this is not a feature that you see almost anywhere else in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So I wouldn't take too much stock in this particular prerequisite. Granted, it is what it is. I'm just telling you what's here on the page. So what do you actually get with this dedication? Well, a lot of things. First of all, you get the Hell Knight mask, which is very, in or the signifier mask, I should say, which is a featureless mask done in the way of your order. And it gives you a bunch of bonuses to things like intimidation or perception. In fact, and I'll look it over here. Uh, while you're wearing your mask, you gain a plus one circumstance bonus to deception checks to lie, intimidation checks, and deception DCs against sense motive. You also gain, with this dedication, profi or expert proficiency in intimidation, which you gain, or you need to be in, you need to be trained in intimidation to get armatures, so this just upgrades that intimidation for you, which is pretty nice. But the even cooler thing is you also get expert proficiency in your choice of arcana, nature, occultism, or religion. Now, what's interesting about this is there's no prerequisite for any of these to get this dedication or not. So technically, if you're not even trained in any of these, 
That's a two skill increase based as the rules here. Whether that's intended or not, I honestly don't know. But if it is intended, that's incredibly powerful as that's essentially three skill increases with one dedication feat, which, you know, honestly, pretty good. So beyond all this, the only other thing I'll mention about the dedication itself is your signifier mask gives you a circumstance bonus to your deception, intimidation, and deception DCs. Granted, this is a little bit odd. I wish it was an item bonus because the problem with the, the signifier mask is you're wearing a mask. So if you want to wear another mask item, it technically conflicts, even though matching equipment doesn't conflict unless they're invested items. So I wish there was item bonuses rather than circumstance, just so that it makes the mask have like value as an item as you only get these bonuses while you're wearing the mask so you're motivated to wear the mask i guess you could technically also imbue the mask with like the 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 fear mask i forget what it's called exactly that gives you an item bonus to intimidation checks technically your gm could just allow you to do that in the way of your hell knight mask which i mean i think is fair and would make that mask then really really cool but it's just something i want to mention with the dedication itself and it's kind of one of the big parts of being a signifier is your signifier's mask so i felt like it was important enough to mention next up is mast casting which is interesting it's a free action that you can use when you are about to cast a spell or when you begin casting a spell and you must be wearing your signifier mask i did mention that this is important and what it allows you to do is avert your gaze. So if you're going to cast a, a spell that dazes all targets in an area and you just happen to be in that area, well, you can avert your gaze. Now, I actually kind of wished that this allowed you to anytime just avert your gaze from like any kind of visual effect. But this is only triggered when you're casting a spell. I feel like if it was any time, it would make the Hell Knight mask or the Signifier mask even cooler. But I don't know, either way, this has some uses, but is kind of a gimmicky feat. So pick at your own or pick at your own derision choice. I don't know. Pick at your own discretion. There we go. That's where I was looking for. Next up is gaze of veracity. And essentially what it does is while you're wearing your helmet, well, you get a focus point. And while you're wearing your mask, so you must be wearing your mask in order to get this feature, you can cast glimpse of truth the uh, cleric domain spell of the truth domain as one of your focus spells. Pretty cool. And for the for the sake of Glimpse of Truth, what it does is it allows you to... It, it, your GM rolls a secret check against all illusions in the area, which is a 30-foot emanation for one round. And it essentially uses your, I guess, spell casting? Huh, interesting. Because it says, instead of counteracting illusion, you see through it. Oh, wait. You're, the GM attempts a secret counteract check against each illusion that is... Instead of counteracting the illusion, you see through it. If the check succeeds against an illusion spell, you see through the creature. What weird. What does that mean, actually? Instead of counteracting the illusion, you see through... It. Oh, so you actually don't cancel the spell. Okay, I understand. You don't cancel the spell. You just can see through it so other people wouldn't. Uh, the area moves with you during the duration, which is one round at this level. And then at seventh level, you can allow everyone to see through the illusions against it, not just yourself. Interesting. It only lasts one round, though. It's I'm, I'm surprised it doesn't go up in level. But yeah, Glimpse Truth, Gaze of Veracity. Overall, not bad. A good way to get an extra focus point if you're really hounding for it. Other than that, this is particularly niche because... Illusions don't come up that often in a game. There will only be maybe a handful of times that this will come up in an entire campaign. So, you know, again, another one to pick at your discretion. Next up is Signifier Sight. You can see that sight and vision are a big thing of the signifier as their whole thing is they are the, the ones who see through lies, deception, and can get to the truth. So I really love the lore and the aesthetic of the signifiers a lot. But anyway, signifier sight allows you to get dark vision while you're wearing your mask, which is really, really cool, actually. 
Uh, not many things can just give you dark vision. And again, this mask is just really cool. You're never going to want to not equip it, unequip it because you lose a lot of benefits from it. So hopefully your jam allows you to kind of mix some magical mask items in with your signifier mask. I think that's only fair as the, the mask is pretty sick. Uh, additionally, while you're wearing your mask, if you're dazzled uh, and targets are benefiting from the conceal condition from the dazzle, you, your flat check for them is three rather than five. So it makes it easier for you to hit targets. Granted, your signifier, you're a spellcaster, unless you're using a direct attack spell, that's probably not going to be... Well, I guess technically in order to target an enemy, you need to make the flat check anyway. So yeah, no, that's just really solid. Overall, signifier sight is probably the best feat that signifier gets besides the dedication, which, as I mentioned before, gives you some good circumstance bonuses. And it gives you like three skill increases potentially. So Signifier Sight is pretty good compared to like Gaze of Veracity, for instance. And we have one more feat before we're done with the Hell Knights. And before we do, I need you all to gaze at this sub button somewhere down on the bottom of the screen to keep moving it. And it helps it helps the channel when you subscribe. You can also like or follow whatever, whatever you guys want to do, honestly. But the channel is amping up and Rage of Elements is coming out later this month. So if you want some exclusive uh, first peak information on Rage of Elements, keep an eye on the channel. You can hit that bell as I'll be doing as, as quickly and as much as I can about the book. I've already put in my info for it. So you'll be seeing some sneak peek Rage of Element information on the channel here soon. But let's go ahead and get to the last dedication, shall we? The last feat here is the Signifier Armor Expertise, which you can pick up at level 12. And it's a very interesting pickup because essentially what it does is if you ever get a higher proficiency in unarmored or lights, in any armor or unarmored defense, there you go, uh, you also get a proficiency increase in your medium and heavy armors as well. Now you do need to be trained at least in heavy armor to become a Hell Knight Armager, which allows you to be a signifier. So this is potentially good. Granted, it only gives you up to expert proficiency in medium and heavy armor. It doesn't do anything higher than that, which I actually hate. This is the Hell Knight entire dedication line is really early in Pathfinder 2E's kind of, I, I guess, uh, creation. And so I feel like some of the feats just didn't get the same love as they did later. I feel like under the current, if, if Paizo was to remake the, the signifier dedication, I feel like this would just allow you to get expert or higher proficiency if you gained, you know, proficiency in, in unarmored or whatever with this i i just don't see the reason why not to honestly but it is what it is so essentially if you ever get expert in any other armor you also become expert in medium and heavy and that's it you don't get any higher than expert proficiency which i mean isn't bad but a two point difference especially late game can be kind of critical so yeah i if i was the gm in the game I would probably make it whatever proficiency and higher. I don't see any problem with that, and that keeps generally in line with how the game is balanced anyway. But I don't know. That's just my own opinion. And that's going to be it for the Hell Knight Signifier and Hell Knights in general. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm going to be linking the Armager and the Hell Knight in this video as well. I'll probably also go back to Hell Knight and Armager and link the other two videos in the line as well. I really love Hell Knights. This is one of the reasons why I love doing archetypes all together. Please let me know down in the comments what you think about the Hell Knights. I, I'm excited to hear your interesting character stories with your particular Hell Knight characters. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you all so much for watching. Good luck with your games. Leave the bad luck to me, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.